The Yakovlev Yak-40, a Soviet-era regional aircraft, has been highly regarded for its reliability and capacity to operate on remote and difficult routes throughout Russia. The Yak-40, which was initially deployed in the late 1960s, was traditionally propelled by three of Chenko AI-25 turbojet engines, each of which generated 1,500 kilograms of thrust. About 15 Yak-40 aircraft are still operational in Russia, predominantly serving socially significant routes in the Russian Far East and the Northwest, despite their age. Alexander Lebedev, chairman of the National Reserve Corporation, recently disclosed a proposal to modernize the Yak-40 by re-engining it with power plants from the Yak-130 military instructional aircraft, recognizing the aircraft's enduring utility. At present, the Russian domestic market lacks a new domestically built aircraft that is specifically designed for the 35 to 40 passenger segment. Russian airlines have, have also been restricted in their ability to renew their fleets due to the exorbitant cost of foreign aircraft of comparable dimensions. As a more permanent solution, the Siberian Research Institute of Aviation and its collaborators have discussed the development of new generation regional aircraft with 30 to 50 seats. Although these aircraft are still in the conceptual or early development stages and have not yet entered service, they are identified by preliminary project codenames such as VIC-30X, VIC-C40X, and VIC-50X. The modern, effective engines of the Yak-130 are engineered to ensure reliable performance and durability. Several substantial benefits could be achieved by modifying these engines for use in the Yak-40. Two Ivchenko Progress AI-222-25 turbofan engines power the Yak-130. Modern digital controls are used by each AI-222-25 engine, which generates a takeoff thrust of 2,500 kg force, approximately 24.5 kN or 5,510 pound force. These engines are designed to offer a favorable thrust-to-weight ratio, high efficiency, and reliability for both advanced pilot training and light combat duties. They are mounted beneath the extended wing roots of the aircraft. An upgraded AI-222-28 version is also available, which increases torque to 2,650 kg force, approximately 26 kN or 5,800 pound force. The DV-2SM engine can be installed in export variants if necessary, while the AI-222-25 is the standard engine for production Yak-130 aircraft. Initially, it is anticipated that the new engines will provide enhanced fuel efficiency thereby reducing operational costs and environmental impact. Secondly, the Yak-40's cruising speed, range, and payload capacity could be increased by improved engine performance, thereby increasing its competitiveness with modern regional aircraft. Third, the maintenance requirements of modern engines are generally lower, which would enhance the availability of aircraft and decrease the life cycle costs for operators. The advantages of re-engining the Yak-40 have been demonstrated in previous modernization initiatives, including those that used Western Honeywell TFE-731 engines. These improvements led to a reduction in fuel consumption during descent and approach, an increase in cruising speed, an extended range, and a decrease in noise levels in the cockpit and interior. Additionally, they resulted in shorter takeoff distances. Building upon these accomplishments, the aircraft's operational utility and capabilities could be further improved through the implementation of Yak-130 engines. The dimensions of the AI-25 are not exactly comparable to those of the AI-222-25. Substantial modifications to the engine nacelles and potentially the airframe would be necessary to accommodate the AI-222-25's increased size and weight when it is integrated into the Yak-40. The Honeywell TFE-731 engines are a closer match to the original AI-25 engines of the Yak-40 in terms of size and weight, making them a more straightforward retrofit option. The Yak-130's AI-222-25 engines are larger and heavier, so adapting them to the Yak-40 would involve more complex engineering changes than the Western TFE-731 re-engining projects. One advantage is that the diameter of the AI-222-25 falls in between the other two engines. 
Lebedev also proposed that the modernized Yak-40 could be serially produced in one of the North Caucasus republics. This initiative has the potential to foster regional economic development, generate employment opportunities, and establish a new aircraft assembly and maintenance facility. In addition, it would strengthen the Russian domestic aviation market, particularly in the 45 to 75 seat regional aircraft segment, where demand remains high and domestic alternatives are scarce. Nevertheless, the project is confronted with economic obstacles, primarily in the area of financing. Lebedev acknowledged that high interest rates make such ventures challenging. However, he underscored the potential for public-private partnerships and government subsidies to address the disparity. He believes that the project's success under the current financial conditions is contingent upon the subsidization of interest rates and the promotion of collaboration between the public and private sectors. Investment in modernization is further justified by the Yak-40's ongoing operation and the manufacturer's intention to extend its service life from 50 to 60 years. The aircraft's significance to regional connectivity in Russia is emphasized by its continuous operation on critical routes. Furthermore, the Yak-40 has been utilized as a test bed for sophisticated propulsion technologies, including hybrid and superconducting electric engines, underscoring its ongoing relevance and adaptability in Russian aviation research. In conclusion, the re-engineering of the Yak-40 with Yak-130 engines is a substantial modernization initiative that has the potential to revitalize an aging but still valuable regional aircraft fleet. The initiative is expected to provide industrial and economic benefits to the regions of Russia while also enhancing efficiency, performance, and operational economics. However, the successful realization of this ambitious vision will be contingent upon the effective support of the government and the collaboration of the public and private sectors to surmount financial obstacles. Now, do you think re-engine of Yak-40 is a good idea as it is a three-engine plane? Let us know in the comments. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to our channel.